In this video, we're gonna talk about how you can find cheap properties for sale. I'm gonna assume you're wanting the properties for one of two things. You're either gonna buy it, renovate it, refinance it, pull all or almost all of your money back out and uh, rent it out to people and earn a monthly income. Financial freedom lies that way, guys. Or you're going to buy it, renovate it, flip it, so sell it for a profit and then take that cash and do with what you will. I would always want you to buy more properties, but you might go and buy yourself a fancy car or holiday. Up to you. Or you just live with it. What I'm not assuming in this video is you're buying a property um, to live in yourself. However, all the techniques are going to work the same. Same. So if you've kind of snuck in the back door and you're like, actually, says I just want to buy my own house cheap, no worries, this video is still going to be really useful for you. So I am Susanna Cole. I run the Good Property Company. The website I've got is absolutely fabulous, full of information for you. And we did over 45 million pounds worth of property sourced for an agreed purchase price of 30 million quid in less than five years. I personally am financial free. I live between Bristol and Barcelona. I have a beautiful flat out near the sea in Barcelona. Uh, and I love living near the city in Bristol in a Georgian house uh, and I don't need to traditionally work anymore because I own a property portfolio that pays for everything that I need for my lifestyle. And by finding discounted deals really helped me get there. So, shall we crack on? Mistake number one that you're gonna find is you bargain on a preset price. Now this is what most people do and it's embarrassing, annoying and irritating. So. Everybody thinks when they come into property that the way to get a property deal is, you want 300, I'll give you 200. Yeah, how annoying is that? If you're the person selling it, you're like, um, I put it on for 300 because I want 300 because it's worth 300. Cut your nonsense, right? If you're the estate agent, you're like, so legally I have to now give my vendor the price. You're embarrassing me, I'm mortified, and I might get sacked because my vendor thinks I'm terrible at getting buyers that are gonna be realistic. People don't normally sell houses to you that they list for 300 and they sell to you for 200. It's amateur mistake number one. Don't do it. You are not pulling down somebody's trousers, are you? So just don't do it. It's embarrassing, it's irritating, and you are not gonna be taken seriously. You're just being a doofball, okay? Are you ready for mistake number two? And this one just makes me giggle and I'm gonna say the words, it's property porn. What do I mean by that? I mean, you just scroll through right move, Zoopla. You just keep looking at the properties. I'm working on my property business. No, you're not. You're just doing property porn. You're not taking action. You, I have never uh, found a house for a commercial deal on a website and we've done over 200. The reason is I'm picking up the phone, I'm asking, I'm going direct to the agent, direct to the auction, direct to the vendor, or direct to the house through leafleting. I am not scrolling through property porn like everyone else. You are just wasting your time. Tip number three is getting your activity levels wrong. You're balancing, okay? And to be fair, until you're in the industry or you've been coached or taught or picked up really good tips, you actually don't know what those activity levels need to be, so it's really easy to get them wrong. So the biggest activity level I see that people get wrong is the number of phone calls versus the number of viewings. They're on the phone for two minutes to the stage and they're like, yeah, 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 I'll come out and see it. Why? You can't get it discounted. You haven't figured out what the vendor's situation is. You, you haven't asked, can I get it a deal? The estate agent's just said, do you want to come and see it? And you're like, yeah, I'm a property investor. I'll go see properties. I'm on site. I'm kicking the tires. Yeah, time waster you. Yeah. And this, so the first thing you need to do is know your ratios of phone calls to viewings. If you are good on the phone, you will make 100 phone calls and only one in four of those, 25 viewings, will result in a, result in a viewing. And often the first uh, deal that the estate agent gives you is just going to be a terrible deal. So you'll probably get a deal from the estate agent if you're saying, well, that one isn't going to work out for me because I'm here for profit. So have you got anything else? Oh, yeah, you've got one that you've forgotten about. Great. So it's often the second or the third deal they tell you about on the phone. So your ratios are 100 phone calls, 25 viewings. So for every four phone calls you make, you should only be booking one viewing max. The bigger tip mistake that people make is they don't offer on all the old properties they view. I will allow you a tiny drop. 
okay? Tiny, which means that you are basically going out assuming you're gonna offer on every single property, so you've done all the work on the phone. So for every 25 properties you view, I will allow you to drop 15% and only offer on 21. Most people go and see a property and offer on about 50 or 25%. Uh-uh, no. You go see a property and you offer an 85% of properties you view. So just to recap, your third mistake that people make is not knowing their activity levels and it is being clear on the phone call that you need to get it discounted. Don't see it unless you can get it discounted. And then once you've seen it, offering on it. So 100 phone calls, 25 viewings, 21 offers. Ready for the next tip? Okay. So now let's find the four tips for you to actually find those properties. The first one is old school, shoe leather. It is direct to house. It's something that we actually used to employ people to do. Imagine employing somebody to go take a walk. Well, if you're starting out on your own, maybe you've got a dog, maybe you need exercise, maybe you need to clear your head, this is great for you. You take a walk, you obviously get your map, um, take a walk in a different street every day, and you are looking for tired old houses that really need some TLC. There's a whole bunch of reasons why people don't renovate their own homes, and men, some of it could be they're unable to, or um, they've left the home, or mo more importantly, they just don't have the money. Now, those people in wrecks, and I'm talking about dirty, tattered curtains that are actually ripped, uh, windows that have not been cleaned for like five years, you know, paint totally peeling off. The inside is just as bad. It's really not very lovely for them to live there. It's often, you're kind of doing them a favor of buying this property discounted, giving them the money, then they can move to a property that's actually much nicer for them to live in to improve their life. So you do the walk around. We actually paid people to do this in the end, and we just gave them the maps, the streets, and then we put we had a list of properties that were tired, unloved, with peeling paint and dirty neck curtains. And then we would either knock on the door or we would write to them on a monthly basis and say, look, we really want to buy a property in your area. Might it be something you consider? So it's a long-term, very cheap way of finding a list of properties that you can buy, usually at discount. Your second tip for finding houses is leafleting direct to house. Now, I used to spend about four grand a month on this, so that's like 48 grand a year. So I'm not saying you need to start with this, but I'm gonna give you a tip on how to make that a zero sum if you're gonna do it. So you're gonna put the leaflet through the house and you're gonna do the three Ds, death, divorce, uh, or um, debt. Uh, repossession. Uh, do you need to sell your house quickly? Are you facing any of these problems? Usually put a lady's number um, and I give you a tip. Don't put your own phone number. Um, you can put in a number and direct it to a call centre. You'll have set them up in advance and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry, Susanna's not available right now. Uh, can I take your details? Uh, and then they and then you can call them at a time that suits you because the amount of people that put up signs saying we buy discounted houses, I always used to test them out and they never answered their phone. Well, what's the point of doing all that, all that advertising? And all, often when you are redirecting to a call center like that, we use things like answer.co.uk. You can actually record the person so you can kind of gauge, you know, a little bit about the person before you phone them back. So that's pretty useful, isn't it? Um, now, my tip on not costing you 4,000 a month is no one's going to keep, keep a leaflet in the house saying are you facing death divorce or debt are they they're going to be like get that leaflet out my house it's miserable but if you say on the other side sell advertising space to your local pizzas your local dentists your local I don't know maybe the doctors don't want to be associated but your hairdressers your takeaways uh, anything like that, then that's the kind of thing that somebody's going to put on the fridge. And then down the bottom, you know, when those little kind of graphics that shows the, the, the corner being lifted up, you say, we buy houses, please turn over. And on this advert for the dentist, the doctor, the, the takeaway pizza, whatever it's going to be, you have the call to action, put me on your fridge. It's amazing. You get paid for this, you cost neutral, your leafleting cost, and then you're in the house for many, many months, if not years, and somebody visiting that house might be, oh, I'm in a DDD situation. What's that leaflet say on the other side? A really super tip for you. Direct to vendor. Again, just like leafleting, but this time online. Um, you could do some adverts, or you could have a, a Facebook page, or you could have a website, which you point people to, to say, look, if you're facing a difficulty and you need to sell your house fast, come to me. Now, uh, I 
I withdrew from the direct vendor and the reason was I found that you were dealing with people's really quite deep social problems and I didn't feel that that was an area I wanted to work in but I will tell you a funny story before and you can make a choice whether you want to whether that suits you as a personality or it doesn't we once were buying a house from this guy he was up in court he wanted to sell really quickly which really told us everything you needed to know he was definitely guilty because if you were innocent you wouldn't sell your house if you were guilty you'd be like I'm going to jail I might as well get my cash and I I mean I didn't but I really felt like saying to the judge listen the bloke's selling his house he bloomin' knows he's guilty for whatever reason he got off and then he stopped the sale straight away I always found that I mean it made me laugh but I always found selling direct to vendor was quite timely um, it was a much less smooth transaction and I like to be like fast simple straightforward no messing and for me no trying to pick up some serious social issues that I'm not qualified or able to to help with that people need help with right your third route to stock and I've left the two good ones for you for last are auctions I love buying an auction pre during and post yeah everybody kind of knows about in the room you know I'm gonna buy uh, at auction of course you do do you know that you can buy pre and do you know that you can buy post so pre is my favorite way to buy at auction you identify all the properties you want to buy in the auction catalog you obviously go see them and um, you download the legal pack but you don't need to pay your lawyer to do it yet and then you put an offer in and you say I want to buy it pre I want to take this property out of the auction now the auctioneers don't always like taking that bid to their their um, vendor but they kind of have to by law the kind of companies that won't sell pre are charities and housing associations and councils because they need to be seen to go to the room to be shown fairness and we actually offered pre on something and then got it in the room cheaper but usually you'll get it cheaper pre in my opinion so I like buying pre I like taking it out the room and then it's a race to get it exchanged before the auction day post is good as well but at auction is good but pre is my absolute favorite my tip which is thinking that auctions are all about what is in the room auctions in the room you've got everybody else trying to beat you the price goes up you lose your brain you bid more than you think whereas if you offer pre or you offer post it's only you the house your thoughts and at the point that it goes past your budget shrug your shoulders next one whereas i have seen people go mental in the room and buy properties for way more than they're worth because they just get all emotional and the auctioneers they are skilled at you know driving up the energy driving up the theater making the whole thing seem fun until you're left out at sea so for me, I quite like the calm simplicity of buying pre or buying post and not getting engaged, although I do a lot of buying at auction uh, because of the theatricality and the opportunity for your kind of human dynamic response to be like, wow, I'm going to win this auction bid. You're not winning a bid. That tells you everything that the auction is manipulated into thinking. You're simply buying a house discounted. So let's do it in the cool of the pre or the post. So the mistake being thinking you always need to go to the room at auctions. Ready for the next one? Okay, my final tip, and it's my favorite, and there's no secret at all. Everyone thinks the secrets in property, there aren't any. You just need to know the industry. You need to get good coaching, good mentoring, good education, and do it is estate agents. They have like 90, 95% of properties for sale. So why wouldn't you go to where the bulk of the product is that you want to buy? So estate agents are selling retail, you are buying wholesale. 1% to 2% of properties that are sold retail are actually end up selling at wholesale price. So here's your numbers for estate agents. You need a population density of about 250,000, so there's enough buying and selling. Otherwise, you're just gonna struggle. You need to have at least 100 estate agent offices in your local area, or again, there just isn't the fluidity. And then we go back to my very first tip, and I think it was the second tip on knowing your activity numbers. 100 phone calls, 25 viewings, 21 offers, gives you one or two deals. But estate agents, they are hiding in plain sight. You will always get between one or two properties in every hundred that's sold discounted. They go fast. So if you're working with an estate agent, you phone them up at 11 o'clock on a Tuesday, you better be ready to jump out for a viewing at 11.30 or 12 o'clock on a Tuesday and not go, can I see it a week on Wednesday? <laughs> no, because somebody like me has jumped out there and actually got that in between times. So estate agents are my simple best tip for finding discounted deals. 
Now, mistake number seven is about you using the wrong metrics. It goes back to something I talked about already. Beginners think that the discount is the difference between the price it was advertised for, I want 300 grand, and the price you bought it for, 220, because you tug the price down by 80 grand. No, no, that's not, you're using the wrong metric. It's an understandable thought process at the beginning, but it's not the right process. The real metric you need to figure out is how much is this property worth done up minus how much is it going to cost me to get it done up to the purchase price. So if you've got no gap between the purchase price and the value and the cost to do it up, you've got no profit. If you've got how much is it worth 45 pieces of research, how much will it cost me to get it done up? That's where builders come in. I've done loads of videos for you on that. And a lovely big gap of like 50 to 100 grand on how much um, can I get the property for? There you are. Now we will sometimes find them on at that price. We have bought deals at asking price. We have occasionally bought deals over asking price because we use the right metric, which is how much is it worth done up? What will it cost me? And how much am I buying it for? So sometimes you don't even need to do any negotiation. You need to just scoop it off and out and grab it for yourself before somebody else gets it. So use the right metric, not the beginner metric. Mistake number eight, send me an email. No, no. <laughs> drives me bananas guys um I, when i was doing uh, mentoring i now do i now uh, you should have a look at my website by the way the good property uk stacks of online material for you and uh, people would uh, record their calls with estate agents and so it's really useful to see the big mistake that people would make and so often the estate agent would be telling them about a deal and they'd be like oh great can you send me an email the stage is not going to take you seriously. Okay, so you're on the phone to the stage and they're telling you about a deal. It sounds like you're going to make money out of it. You quickly do the maths while you're on the phone and you say, great, can I come and see it in half an hour? What's your diary looking like? Can I come and see it this afternoon? How are you for this evening? If you're fully stacked today, is there any possibility I could be first in tomorrow morning? I want no emails from estate agents. It shows them that you're unable to work out a deal. It shows them that you're not practiced. It shows them you're not professional it shows them that you're like just everybody else who's like please send me an email now if it's a deal go get it straight away do not commit a state a mistake number eight send me an email got it you ready for mistake number nine it's leaving the process of buying the property to the experts what i should leave that no no if you are buying property from an estate agent and using a lawyer no matter who the lawyer is and i've worked with some amazing ones they're gonna be slow. One in three properties fall out of bed in the UK. Why? Normally because of the conveyancing. It's very rare because of the actual property because the conveyancing is too slow. No, 11 o'clock in the morning and two o'clock in the afternoon, you phone your lawyer, you phone the estate agent. Hey, uh, just check in. Is there anything we need for today? All oh, right, you need an, an answer to that inquiry. Super, great. I'll just chase the other side. And so if you're buying through an estate agent, unfortunately your lawyer has to talk to their lawyer. Um, which is why I like buying and selling direct. But you know, if you're buying through an estate agent, you've got to do it that way. So if your lawyer is saying we need an answer to an inquiry, you are straight on the phone to the estate agent going, hey, hello, lovely to talk to you. Just had a quick chat with my lawyer. They need this inquiry. I wonder if you'd be so kind to nudge the other side's lawyer to get that back to my lawyer. Would it be okay if I gave you a quick call at two o'clock? Great, so that's 11 o'clock. You've given them three hours, yeah? At two o'clock, you phone your lawyer. Hey, just checking, did you get the answer to that inquiry? Yes, fabulous. Quick text to the estate agent because you've got their personal mobile. Of course you do. Thanks so much, you're an absolute superstar. Or if no, I wondered whether you got the lawyer. Is there any chance you can give them a quick, you know, and give them another call? So you chase, chase, chase like mad. Do not leave buying the property to the experts. It doesn't work. You do not want to be that one in three falling out of bed. No thanks, we want this bought. We want you making money, all right? Got it? Right, the final mistake, do you wanna know what it is? Mistake number 10 is just going, oh, I didn't get it, that's that. Oh, no way. You've got what's called an SOS system, sourcing offer system. You put it back into your files and in 30 days time, you pick it back out of your file, back into the estate agent or whoever it is that's selling it and saying, how is it going? You know, I know that you sold it to somebody else 30 days ago. Is it still proceeding? It is. Oh, congratulations. I'll give you a quick bell in, in another month. In the meantime, if you get any more deals or how is it going? 
oh, it's back on the market. I would love to buy it. I don't even need to come and see it again. I'm going to put my offer in straight away with my decision and principle and all the rest of it. And immediately you put your offer in. So you are improving your efficiency because you're catching those deals, those one in three deals that fall out of bed that you can buy. So do not commit a state, a mistake number 10, which is I didn't get it. Go back 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Why? because you'll highly likely pick up deal after deal after deal. If this marathon video has been useful to you, remember to subscribe so you can get more videos. I've got playlists on flipping, I've got playlists on deal sourcing, I've got playlists on finding investors. It's a cracking YouTube channel. And also remember my fabulous website. It is there to really help you succeed, thegoodpropertycompany.co.uk. And I covered 10 mistakes on you sourcing deals from four different routes, which was a pretty marathon video. So hats off to you. Good luck to you in property. See you soon, bye. If what we've put out for you guys really works for you, then fabulous. Support our channel, click the like button, and thank you so much.